So let's talk about hydrogen as a proven science. And, and I know you didn't hear about it on the news. You've heard all about all kinds of other political crazy things going on. But we never hear about these kind of things. We're, we're hearing about, you know, who bought what car, I don't, you know, how, how Tesla's doing or whatever. But we don't hear about how, wait a minute, we can drink or get hydrogen in our body and have increased immune function or cancer going away or whatever. But there are 700 plus studies since 2008. Imagine that for a second. 2008, it wasn't long ago, we have 700 studies showing H2 to be therapeutic with 170 human disease models. Is this significant information? Should it be on the news? Yes, it should. It should. You know, I mean, all of these things, all of these things. So again, there's 700 studies. What I want to say before we go into some studies right here is the outcomes are not guaranteed, okay? Now, these studies are pretty significant, and the language is very strong compared to most studies which say maybe it's possibly on a Wednesday some year you might see a benefit, right? Have you ever read studies like that? Yeah. So we're like, I don't know why you'd spend all that time doing that if that's what your outcome was. But here in these studies, I'm going to read you a couple of the conclusions because that's the fun part. It's like the end of the book, right? So we get to read the conclusion, and it's pretty strong language. I want you to pay attention. But again, every study, you have a double blind, and, it, and you weren't in it. So there's no guarantee for you. But we can see trends. We can see, hey, there's probably a pretty good chance it's going to help me if it helped these other 45 people, right, in this study. So let's look at the first study that got everybody woken up. This was from Nature Medicine, very, very well-respected periodic. And this was simply saying that hydrogen reduced oxidative stress, and, and it was a selective antioxidant. This is what kind of woke everyone up. Dr. Shigeota from Japan was the leading contributor of this study and basically said, look, it particularly reacted with hydroxyl radicals, which was the most cell damaging or cytotoxic oxygen radical in the human body. And it was a selective antioxidant. It didn't react with other ROS that had physiological roles or life-sustaining roles. So this was a significant study. And since then, everyone's like, well, heck, if it does that, what else does it do? So here we go. Here's colon cancer. We're all here for Truth About Cancer, thank goodness, Ty and Charlene did this, right? Amazing, amazing, amazing people. But imagine who did this study. It says right at the top, hydrogen water enhances 5-fluorocyl-induced inhibition of colon cancer. Well, we call it 5-FU. That's kind of funny, isn't it? <laughs> so this is what we, when the medical industry, what we call 5-fluorocyl five is 5-FU. This is, I'm not making that up. It was funny, but life is funnier than jokes sometimes. But what this is saying, this is the drug company, the chemotherapy company themselves, saying, hey, what happens if we combine hydrogen with our chemotherapy drug? And the answer was 100% cancer cell death. Is that important? Did you hear about it on ABC, NBC? No. So bottom line, this is significant. But what they found was that the chemotherapy drug by itself didn't obviously do it. Hydrogen by itself had a more <laughs> anti-cancer activity than did the chemotherapy drug. But heck, when we put them together, wow, it's amazing. And the reason, I'm going to see if my pointer will work. Oh, look at that. So right here, hydrogen water administration improved the survival of mice with colon 26 induced cancer. Furthermore, hydrogen water enhanced cell apoptosis in cancer cells. Now, this is significant because apoptosis is the natural ability of the body to tell a cell, destroy yourself if you're reproducing inappropriately. But somehow when cancer takes over mitochondrial function in the cell, it says, no, 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 you're fine just the way you are because it's diversity. And we love you just the way you are. So you keep on going the way you're going. And hydrogen's like, no, 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 destroy yourself. And it does. And so this was a benefit for hydrogen, as it told the cancer cell, yes, do what you're programmed to do. Now, the other part I want to want to share with you is right here. High content hydrogen water exhibited stronger antioxidative and anti-cancer activity than did natural hydrogen water. So this is now a new concept that there's natural hydrogen water, which there is. On this earth, there are streams, lakes, rivers all over the planet, not just in certain places, but across the world that actually have hydrogen 
gas dissolved in them and people go to them for he and they consider them healing waters, interestingly enough. Now, what does it say? In conclusion, high content hydrogen water can inhibit colon cancer. That's pretty strong language, right? Particularly in combination with five fluorocells. We have to get that in too. But the, the reality is what a great study. What a great study we have. So now uh, I'm going to scan through this real quick. This is talking about neurologic or Parkinson's. This was a great, this is one of many studies on Parkinson's and Alzheimer's talking about ghrelin secretion. So effectively ghrelin is a growth hormone that can be released in the stomach and the small intestine, large, mostly in the stomach. And effectively when you drink water with hydrogen, it selectively stimulates ghrelin secretions. Ghrelin goes to the hippocampus, hypothalamus, and brainstem to increase cognitive function. Greatly helps neurologic, people with neurologic conditions. Now what's interesting here is what it says here, H2 supplementation does not result in what? A change in the hydrogen levels in the brain. So again, it comes down to, it was, and the next line shows, whoop, there it is. It increased gastric ghrelin expression. So it was ghrelin that was in the brain that was basically given signal modulation from hydrogen. So hydrogen levels didn't change in the brain, but ghrelin did by what? Hydrogen giving direction. And so that's what's important. Now, I told you it, it helped the gut. We're gonna talk about why water or how water can help the gut. It's actually not hydrogen because your gut's supposed to be producing hydrogen. What, what this study is showing is that if we change the electrical potential of water itself and it gets into the small intestine and changes the epithelial tissue of the lining of our gut, then guess what? we selectively stimulate anaerobic microflora. Now we've done some studies and we can outpace an antibiotic. We can actually grow good bacteria faster than antibiotics can kill it, interestingly enough, when you're drinking water with hydrogen gas in it. And when the electrical potential, because the, the whole process creates water that has a negative 400, negative 500 millivolts of electrical potential in the water. And that is what changes the terrain, the biome, and makes a new home for the proper bacteria strains. Okay. Here's type two diabetes mellitus. And I love, I mean, that's where I spent most of my career patient wise in, med in medicine was, was ankle and foot for diabetes. Mm -hmm.